In this demonstration, I'll be showing you how to use Mail Merge to create documents that are fully customized based upon any data that you might have listed in a Word table or an Excel spreadsheet or other methods. For instance, I'm going to create this document here into a fully customized letter that I'll be mailing to a few particular people. Now, I've already gone ahead and created my document in Word 2007. And you can see that I've entered in some placeholders right here for first name, for last name, as to where I am going to want very customized data to be inserted. Now, once my letter is fully uh, formatted, as it is, I'm going to go ahead here and start the mail merge process. To do this, I'm going to go up in the ribbon here to Mailings, left click, and I'm going down to the Start Mail Merge group to the Start Mail Merge tab, left click. I'm going to select Letters. Now, once I've done that, I'm ready to begin the mail merge process, and now it's time for me to select the recipients of this letter. There's a few options here that you should know about. The first is, if you don't already have a database or a spreadsheet set up that you have with data in it, you might want to go ahead and type a new list. That brings up this dialog box where you can type directly into it, like so, and keep tabbing through, entering in data. When you're ready for the next entry, you hit new entry and you continue on. However, that's not what I'm looking to do right now. Cancel. Instead, I would like to use an Excel spreadsheet that I have already set up as a database. So instead, I'm going to go up to Select Recipients, Use Existing List, and now I'm going to go ahead and select my workbook that has the details in it. Now here it brings up, it's asking me to select the table. This is which worksheet in the Excel workbook do I wish to use? In my case, it's on sheet one. And notice here it says the first row of data contains column headers. I did indeed set up my worksheet with headers already in the first row of data. So I want to leave this clicked and now I hit okay. Now, once I've done that, I have the ability to go in and edit the recipient list. If I click on here, you can see the details I already have in my worksheet. And if I choose not to include someone, I can simply remove them by deselecting them here, etc. I can also sort by what city. I can not only sort, I can also use this to specifically select blanks versus non-blanks, etc. So this gives you the ability to edit, uh, sort, and filter who specifically you would like to have receiving this. In my case, everyone who's on my list is who I want. I'm going to hit OK. Now, at this point, I'm going to replace my first name placeholder here with a field from my database. So I'm going to select here and highlight first name. I'm going to go up here into write and insert fields. I'm going to select with a left click insert merge and select the first name field. You will see that my text has now been replaced with a field and I know it's a field because of these double chevrons here at the edges. I wanna make sure there's a space in between my first name and last name. I'm now going to highlight my last name placeholder and replace it with my last name field. Now the address will be replaced with the number, city with city field. I want to make sure my comma is there in between and there is indeed a space in between that. I'm going to replace my state. There we go. 
and now my zip code as well. Excellent. I'm going to hit return. And now dear first name. I'm going to replace that placeholder again with the first name field, etc. Now going through, I did put in a space here where I would like a personal note to go. So I am going to replace that field with my personal note field. And now I believe all of my placeholders have been replaced. At this point, I'd like to see how it's looking. I'm going to click here on preview results. Ah, now when you click on this button, it replaces the merge fields in your document with actual data so you can see what it looks like, just like it says right below. That's looking pretty good. I can even go ahead and click through individual records to see how it looks. Now here's one with my personal note. Looking good. I'm going to click through. Good job. Now at this point, I'm pleased with the results. And what I would like to do is look at the whole page. That's looking good. At this point, I like the way that my document looks. I'm ready to go ahead and finish the document and merge all the data. I'm now going to go up here to the ribbon. Again, under the mailings tab, finish and merge. Click on here and I have a few options. I can edit individual documents, directly send all the documents to the printer. There's even an option to send as an email message, but for our purposes today, we will not be talking about email messages. In this case, I always go ahead and edit individual documents. This way I can double check all of these uh, individual letters before I send it to the printer and potentially waste paper. So when I click on this, you will see it's going to ask me to merge records. Now, is there a specific one I want to merge? The one that's showing on the screen, current record. Do I just want to merge numbers one through two? Nope, in my case, I'd like to merge all of them. I'm gonna hit okay. Now you'll see that this has created a whole new document. This is no longer the previous letter, it's a separate document. And now I can go through and scroll through each of these and make sure that all the alignment and everything looks right. That looks good. That looks good. Going down. Overall, I'm pleased with this. And when I'm done with all my last minute edits, I'm done, I can go ahead and send to a printer. I hope these details help you understand a little bit more about mail merge.